Yo, my name is Peach, and this video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be making a small animation in Fusion while teaching you a little bit about editing in the Fusion page. I do go very quickly, so just be warned. If you haven't seen my AMV Basics tutorial, please go watch that before viewing this video so you'll have a better understanding. The main point of this video is to get the information out, so whenever someone asks a question in the Resolve AMV Community Discord, we can answer it with this video if it's just a basic question or a basic understanding that someone needs to know. Alright, let's get started. Alright, I'm going to teach you how to make this simple animation. That text rising up and then the circle ring. All right, first we're gonna do is gonna get a fusion composition. If you don't know what that is, it's gonna, you're gonna hit effects library. We got toolbox effects fusion comp right here. Just drag it in. Fusion composition is basically uh, a timeline just for your fusion page. You go in. Let's just add a background note. Background notes right here. Just drag that in and connect it to the media out. But with the by clicking the square and dragging a line to the triangle and there we go all right when you view it it's probably gonna look like this you know two viewers and what are the viewers for this is where you can view each node separately so right now I'm viewing the media out and the second viewer you can just hit two and as I say I wasn't this it wasn't selected I just click the node hit two it's gonna pop up in this viewer I can also drag it to one of the viewers and it'll show up there I'm just going to work with one, so I'm just going to close it right here, and then we are we have, we have a background connected. So let's just navigate the fusion page first. Up here, it's a media pool. This is where you can drag in any footage into the fusion composition. Here is just Tanjiro. I did the media out, and it just plays the clip. All right, then we're going to have our effects library. Our effects library has a bunch of tools and you, that you can drag in. This is where you get all the tools in Resolve. There's also some basic tools up here. Like I did, I grabbed the background. But these are one of the, some of these. Most of these right here are the ones you're going to be using the most, like the transform and the merge. And another way to access your tools is you hit shift space on your keyboard. And this like search thing is going to come up, and then you can type in any tool that you want. Oops. Let's cancel that for now. Up here you have your spline graph. You should know that if you watch the AMV Basics tutorial. You have a keyframe tab. It's basically, once we start keyframing a bunch of animations, keyframe is going to pop up here. Then we also have a lastly our inspector. And inspector shows the all the effects that come within a node. So on the background node, the effects that you can do on a background node is change the color. And then some other things, but you can also change the luminance. Let's just change the color. Let's say, oh, let's make it a red, something like that. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to add a merge to our fusion graph or no graph. So the merge nodes right here. I'm just going to drag it on here. And a quick way to <clears throat> the quick way to put this on here without disconnecting and reconnecting and everything back up is if you just hit shift. If you hold shift down and the, the line changes to a different color, then it'll go on the line. You can also hit shift and pull it away to take it off. As you can see here, now we have a merge node and has three different inputs. What are these inputs? Let me just grab a text node to show you. Let's put it on the input. Let's type something so it appears and we just change the size over here. So the merge node has three different inputs. The green input is the foreground, the yellow input is the background, and the blue input is the mask input. So foreground input is whatever is on top of the background. So we have the background, <coughs> our background is a background node, which is the color. And then we have the foreground, which is the text. Say if we switch these, I'm just going to switch it with a control T. Now we have the text on the background node and we have the background node on the foreground. So that means we can't view our text. Say if I turn the lumens down, you can see that the text is actually behind the background node. We don't want that. We don't want how we use it. So I'm going to put it on the foreground. Uh, let me just do a, show you a mask real quick. So we're just going to take you know, these masks, all these four of these tools are masks. This is an ellipse mask. We put it on here. We can see that nothing happened. But if we move the circle, you can see that the whatever is inside the circle is the only thing that appears on the foreground. So a mask, pretty much an eraser, and it only shows a certain space. So let's just put that back in the middle. I should really delete this. Alright. So 
we have our text. Now it's time. Let's, yeah, let's animate our text. We're gonna grab a transform node right here, bring it down, and we're gonna connect it. So I want this animation to happen for 30 seconds. So I'm just gonna keyframe the center. I hit the key the keyframe button. <coughs> is on the side. It's little diamonds. Every time you keyframe, you hit click it. It's gonna turn orange. That means there's a keyframe at that spot. And you just go to the start keyframe right there, and then we can also move this down. You can see if we play back what we just did, we made an animation, with the text moving upwards. Now this is fine, but the timing peels off. It's too linear. It's very, it's very constant at the same time. The way we change that is through the spline graph. Okay. We're gonna we activate the displacement on the transformer node. And also, if you want to, if you don't have access, you can just drag it on here and hit it zoom to fit over here. And you can see all your keyframes right here. You're gonna highlight all these, all these keyframes. Hit S. Then you can adjust it. So we're gonna do like an ease in curve. So it's gonna start off fast and then go slow. Watch. There you go. I like that. That's nice. So we have our animation with our text coming from the bottom of the screen. Now let's add the circle. I'm gonna add a merge node again. Now if we put the merge here, well, and we put whatever in front, like say we're gonna put the, the circle animation next. If we put the circle in front, that's, that means the circle is gonna it's gonna be the layers are gonna be circle, then the text, then the background. We don't want that. Why why does that happen? Because this is on the background to background input. So if you want to put the circle behind the text, but in front of the background, we're going to put it here. So it's the background's going to the background, and then we have the foreground, which is going to be our circle. And then we have this, both, all these nodes are going to be a background to this merge node, which the text is in the foreground. Hopefully that makes sense once I put the circle. So let's, let's add the ellipse. So we're going to hit shift space and we're going to type ellipse add that here if you try to add this to the merge right now it's not going to work because you need an s render some nodes need that like if you're working in 3d or with particles there's going to be a, a certain render node that's where you connect it up and bam you have your circle let's change the color of our circle i think that's fine so we're going to animate the circle we're gonna make it go small and then get big to do our animation so I like this the final size right now so I'm gonna keep it here so if say we want to make it smaller we're gonna move that but there's an easier way we double click this value and hit equal then this is gonna pop up which is an expression modifier if we can link it to the width now every time we move our width it's gonna move our height and it's gonna be the values are gonna be synced and so that's what we want. So we can just keyframe the width. Let's make this go down to zero. And then that's what our animation looks like right now. Very stiff as well, or linear as well. So let's uh, change the spline of that. Oh, that's what we wanted. Wait a minute. All right, let's change it here. Make it go like that. All right. Now it gets big over time. Now we want to put a ring. This is where we're going to use a mask. Let's take the mask and we're going to put it in the blue input of the S render. This is going to mask the circle. It won't look like it now, but if I lower it, you can see that it's taking it away from the circle. All right, let's link these again. All right, then we can just keyframe the width, just like we did with the circle. Now if I play it back, Oh, I gotta invert the mask. Play back. You can see there's a ring, but it's not perfect. So we gotta adjust the splines on the ellipse as well. So let's bring it into the spline. Change that. And if we copy the ellipse graph we have here, you can see that you'll never see the circle. That's what we do with the offset. The offset the animation with the graph. So let's bring that down more, and then you can see you have your animation like that and that 
that's pretty much it. As you can see, there's a little line here. So let's just, we're, we're gonna increase the last value. It covers up that line. If you're having some playback issues, you can right click this timeline over this place over here, and hit turn off high quality and motion blur. And just go up here to playback. I'm on proxy mode to get that quarter resolution. It's gonna lower the resolution of your playback here. But once you render, it's gonna be the same high quality. So you don't worry, don't have to worry about it. If you want to play back only a certain segment of the fusion composition, you can drag this yellow line inwards and it'll repeat when the yellow line stops. And I believe that's uh, all the information. So yeah. If you would like additional help, please join the Resolve AMV community discord. There's a ton of people there that can help you out if you're confused with anything. But other than that, subscribe and have a good day. Oh my god, I, that dead ass took six attempts to make the video, bro. Every time that I, I tried recording before, like this background noise. Oh my god, that's why I'm whispering because everyone's asleep right now. Sometimes I record in my garage and you know, I can speak as loud as I want, like right now. I, I did it for the intro, I did it for the outro, but like when I'm in my garage, I either have like, like a script. I Now I usually do scripts, but back then I did everything from memory and oh my god i edit like hours of audio i'm not even gonna lie it is pain in the ass but now i'm used to it